Hey, welcome back. Uh, so I'm kind of excited. We've left the world of axial force and we're moving on uh, to look at torsion and shear stresses uh, resulting from torsion. Uh, so it's kind of fun to be doing something new for a change. Uh, anyway, uh, we're, we're here to start off and we're going to be using the method of se sections and the graphical method to determine the torque force diagram. Of course, the torque force diagram, very analogous to the axial force diagram, is a graph of the internal torques over the length of the member in question. And so in this case, we have a rod A to D with a series of externally applied torques. And what we're going to do is we're going to use what should look like very similar methods to when we were doing axial force to resolve these internal torques. And so we're going to step right off. In this video, we're going to look at uh, a very deliberate method of sections uh, methodology, uh, which uh, is absolutely essential to, to be understood. And, and then we're going to close that out. We're going to come back very quickly to get down and dirty with the graphical method to very quickly derive in a simple system like this, a torque force diagram. So let's get on with it. Uh, so the method of, of sections uh, can't get there quite yet. What we need to do is to get our free body diagram drawn so we can understand the problem and solve for reactions. So let's uh, draw our free body diagram. I've got it all set up with our center line axis and our lines drawn down. So I'm going to add a reaction torque. And that would be our torque at A. I'm going to put in our externally applied torque. So we have our torque at B, which is 150 Newton meters. We have our torque at C, which is 60 Newton meters. And finally, we have our torque at D, which is 10 Newton meters. So we've already drawn in the axis. So I'm looking it over. I think we have everything we need. So we can jump right in. We can solve for our reactions. And like I say, this process should be looking fairly similar because it's pretty much identical to what we were doing for axial loads. So solve for reactions. Okay, so we have to apply our equations of static equilibrium, which in this case we have one, which is the sum of the torques about the x-axis, and they of course have to be equal to zero. Now, so the first one we have is the torque at A. So we, we're using this methodology of drawing our torques in as a double arrow-headed vector, uh, and that uses the right-hand rule in order to demonstrate in two dimensions this torque rather effectively. And so if we point the thumb in the direction of the arrows, then the fingers indicate the direction of the torque. And it's just a little bit easier to do uh, than to try to draw a bunch of circular arc arrows and stuff like that in two dimensions. So, so we'll use that almost exclusively as we go through these problems. So we have torque at A. We have it drawn in as positive x direction. So we'll do that, torque at A. The 150 at B is going in the other direction, so we'll put that in as negative. Add our 60 at C and add the 10 Newton meters, which occurs at D. Isolate or solve for the torque at A, and we get a value of 80 Newton meters. And I'll just carry over to our free body diagram and write that in so we know what it is. So that's great. That pretty much resolves our, our free body diagram. So, so, so we have to start to conceive what our torque force diagram is going to look like. And, and so what we're looking for is sections of uniform torque. And we can see that there is no torque being applied between A and B. There's a, a reaction torque at A and an externally applied torque at B, but nothing being applied between A and B. And that is also true between B and C and C and D. And so we're going to have three sections of uniform torque, which tells us that we need to apply the method of sections in three different spots. Once between A and B, once between B and C, and once between C and D. So method of sections.
And we're going to draw three partial free body diagrams. We'll start between A and B. And what we need to do is we need to put in our, our torque at A, which is 80 Newton meters. And of course, there's nothing externally applied, but we would have an external or an internal torque potentially resulting uh, in there. And that's going to be our torque between A and B. Now I'm just going to and I'll label up our diagram so we see where we are. That's at A, and we're cutting our section somewhere before we get to B. And so all we need to do is to apply our equation of static equilibrium. Sum of the torque about x equals 0, and that's equal to our reaction of 80 newton meters plus our torque between A and B. And so we get our torque between A and B is equal to negative 80 Newton meters. We're just going to keep on going here. We're going to look between B and C. And again, I'm going to set up a partial free body diagram. Put our externally applied loads on it. So our reaction at A, in this case, we have one internally or externally applied torque at B. And a potential internal torque between B and C. So we have torque BC, we have 150 Newton meters there, and of course this was 80 Newton meters back there. And as before, we do our sum of the torques about the X is equal to zero, and following our sign convention, And we get torque BC is equal to 70 Newton meters. So that's great. One last one to do. We're going to set up our partial free body diagram for the section CD. So I'll just draw it out here. Put on our torques. So we have two externally applied torques, and that's the 150 Newton meters at B and the 60 Newton meters at C. And between uh, C and D, then, we have a potential internal torque and we'll label that as our torque between c and d tidy this up a bit so we have a starting to get complicated so we better do some labeling and now apply our statics so some of the torques about x is equal to zero which is equal to our 80 newton meters minus our 150 Newton meters plus our 60 Newton meters as well as our torque between CD. Again, we can solve for TCD because it's our only unknown and we get a value of 10 Newton meters. So now it's just a matter of transferring these values up to our torque force diagram and recognizing that they are constant between A, B, B, C, and C, D. And so we'll start with our minus 80. We'll draw that in here. Then we'll jump up and we'll draw in 70. And then we'll draw in 10. And then we'll close our diagram by connecting the lines. And we'll make sure we label them. And we have our torque force diagram. So like the axial force diagram, the torque force diagram, really, really powerful and essential tool for being able to graph our internal torques over the entire length of the 
uh, structure or rod in this case between A and B. And that's going to facilitate all our further calculations down the road when it comes to determining internal stresses or twist or angle of twist or deformations associated with torsion. So that's it. That's the deliberate method. It takes a little bit of time to lay it out, but it is absolutely perfect as far as understanding what's going on in this rod internally. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close this uh, video and we're going to pop right over and uh, uh, jump back in and do this using the graphical method. So uh, I'll leave a link here to the next video and let's bring this along so we can quickly jump in and start looking at stresses and deformations associated with torque.